Jeremy Shines. Welcome to another episode of Community Conversations with Anthony. How do you pronounce your last name? Stelke. 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 Hey, Anthony. Good day. Yeah, it actually is the day. So, how do you feel? What inspired you to be on the show? Because I know you said yet yeah, no at first. I don't know. I'm. Um... Some of the ideas that we were talking about about the community and stuff and how you know your passion for the community was you know i mean most people would probably say that there's very little you can do to sway a community to change but i always believe that if you get enough people to do something right that people change you know <laughs> people will realize hey you know this isn't working anymore you know right so if we want something to change then we're all going to have to work together to do it and I appreciate that. And I and you taking that very literal, which was the intention. And now that you're here, I'm kind of like a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little bit of time to prepare. I kind of listened through some of your other uh, episodes just to kind of see what kind of questions you asked. Okay, what'd you think? So I've had time to think about <laughs> these things. Um, you know, uh, uh, yeah. They were they were good questions. Uh, I find people have a tendency to tr stray away from questions <laughs> a little too far. That was the one thing I thought about um, Mr. Stephen when he was with you. Like he strayed too far from the question, I believe. It was kind of funny to watch because it was totally him. It was, it was, it was all his personality, and that's what we try to capture. We try to capture like this is the first time we're shooting. He had time to rehearse. A lot of you time. Uh, I just. We just go, we just flow. Yeah. And we wanted to show people how just authentic, weird things happen in conversations. And it's just like, you could tell probably yeah. when you watch people, you're like, this is, this is uncomfortable <laughs> for me. I'm not even into this show. And I'm yeah. like, that's like, life, he, man. He, he sets up right there at the beginning. And I went, oh, okay. <laughs> we just got into a heavy conversation right there. Battle Mountain. Opinion. It's a small community and it has a lot to grow. It really does. And I, I've i talked to a lot of people about it. I work with a lot of people that live in Winnemucca, you know, and they choose to live there rather than here because of the fact that we're too small. There's nothing here. Besides the mines. Besides the mines, you know, and that's not enough for them to, to want to move here. Right. And it's not that we're trying to bash the mines. If we hear that the mines donate a lot to yeah. this town. It's Which, not. that's where may, our main income would come from, around mm -hmm. here. I mean, we've got, I was just sitting here waiting for you to come, and I was thinking to myself, I was trying to count all the mines that are just in this general vicinity. Mm -hmm. I've counted at least four that I know of, mm -hmm. positively, and I know that there's more out there. So you work out of mines? Yes, I work out of the Phoenix Project for uh, Nevada gold mines. How long you've been in Battle Mountain, and how long have you there. Off and on for, I'd say about two or three years, I've I've lived uh, off and on in Battle Mountain. Um, but I've worked for Phoenix Project for four years. So I've kind of gone back and forth with it. It wasn't supposed to be a permanent solution. I was supposed to be able to transfer to a different mine. Come to find out it's a lot harder than it seems. Yeah. <laughs> you know, then they make it sound. So I kind of gave up on it. I got to a certain point in my career that I just... I couldn't see myself, you know, just leaving that mine and going to another one, starting back on the farm, or even, you know, trying to work my way. You're, no matter what, you're starting out at the bottom when you go to another mine site, whether they're paying you more or not. And when you get off of work, and you come to back to Battle Mountain. What is your like? Why do you? Why do you leave it? when you you guys go on vacations or stuff? Like, what would you like to see that Battle Mountain would have to keep? here during those weekends and actually this was something that my wife and me have talked about and pastor john and i actually talked about it on uh breakfast the other morning on i think that was saturday saturday morning. i saw you i was that. driving by ah. to shoot a film and i was going to show up but i had to shoot a film in the morning. yeah it was something we all talked about there was you know 
we have a small community here and people aren't moving to this community because there's not a lot here. I mean, you've got two grocery stores that are owned by families, which is all great, you know, small businesses are great. But when you're looking at making your community bigger, you can't you can't go off on just small businesses. You need your bigger businesses because it's not only it's not only for the fact of the convenience of buying stuff, it's also for the convenience of a new job. You put 300 jobs in this town, they're either going to be filled or people are going to have to move here to fill it. And if there's jobs here to, to work, I mean, at that point, you've, you've already corrected half of your problem. The other half will probably be your housing, you know, which we have affordable housing here for certain people. And, and I'm talking to a friend about, he works in the industry of getting businesses that should come to Um Some other people I talk to, they they um, deal with small businesses, and he is trying to get bigger businesses like the mines, but not of the mines, yeah. to come out here and, and invest into the land because we've got oh yeah, we've got all kinds of land out here. You know, um, I think Pastor John was telling me that FedEx for a long time wanted to put a. Uh, a, distri a distribution center out there at the airport. We have the second largest airport in Nevada yeah, here, I heard about that. and we don't even use it to its part of its potential. You know, I mean, we use it mainly for firefighting, but I mean, we have the ability to fly in all kinds of planes. And I mean, if you put in a facility like that, you're looking at what close to a thousand jobs, maybe. I mean, depending on the size of the facility. So what would you do personally as far as just like, what would you like to see in Battle Mountain? And what, what is your perspective of how to grow Battle Mountain? Well, we need other, we need more business opportunities here, like more job opportunities for the people that are here, you know? I mean, right now, if you're, if you don't work in the mines, you work at Maverick, McDonald's, or the grocery stores as part-time. I mean, I've, you know, I've seen a lot of people go through these jobs and, you know, and I understand, you know, what happens when you work at these jobs. I, I did not start off in the mines when I came back to Nevada. I started off as a roofer. A roofer? Yes. What's that? Um, I tore roofs off and replaced roofs. I, I know that's probably what it was. I just, you know, when something sounds like it should be, it's like, what do yeah. you do? <laughs> um, but, you know, I was making $11 an hour, $10 an hour, which at the time I thought was great. I was making what I was making in the military. I was like, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> you know, I had all kinds of money when I was in the military, but when you're in the military, your housing and everything is paid for. Right. You know, when you get to the real world, you don't realize that, you know, housing, phones, you know, gas, gas yeah, everything, everything costs out here. They don't really, and I was in the military myself. That's the first time you guys hear me say that. But, uh, <laughs> he knows that. He knows that. Yeah. Um, and they kind of babysit you. Yeah. But they like overly babysit you. Yeah, you, you're, like you're grown, treated as a child when you're in the military. Grown man child. Yeah, grown yeah. man child. They expect you to be a man, but they also expect you to be a child. <laughs> <laughs> so they do both. You know what's funny? is It's not very funny, but I was not able to buy... when I, I joined when I was 18. And for some reason, I don't know why... It was, and just hear me out. I was not able to buy a like a um, a a rated R or rated mature video game, and I was in the military. <laughs> I don't know for I don't know. That's just what comes to my mind. I don't know the I don't remember the why or that was the case. They would not sell me a, a shooter's game, a military game. But I'm pretty sure it was a military game because who doesn't like shooter games? Exactly. And I'm wearing my uniform. <laughs> you want me to go across to fight for your freedom, get shot at with real guns. But you won't let me play a video game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it, it never, you know, there's a lot that doesn't make any sense. You know, I've seen, I've seen gentlemen that are, you know, in their 30s and in their 40s, they come to a new command and they, they basically put on, you know, children's rules you know and it's just like that would that that would drive me crazy if i was 38 years old or 40 years old and come to a new command and they're treating me like a child that's like that would bother me a little bit yeah, you know because it's, it's like yeah. i've lived four years man i i could i can handle myself and i want to mention to a this, certain extent i want to mention this for the first time 
and I'm not gonna, I don't say names, but they know who I'm talking about. And what happened was we're at a softball game. I'm out there filming. I'm on the field right next to the pitcher. I'm in there with yeah. a film camera. And one of the guys did not like that. Everyone else was cool with it, but just one person didn't like it. It was like, get off the field. Now I understand safety. But I'm a grown man. You know what I mean? If <laughs> I get that on a ball, you took that responsibility. I took that on myself, you know, and it was just that that that, that was a little upsetting. It was yeah. just like at the end of the day, we're we're grown, we're mature, you know. Yeah. We should be, right? Yeah. We should be. <laughs> so that's another whole side <laughs> of life. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, I mean, how do you feel about, you know, becoming a dad? Well, I was actually already a father before I had my son here in Battle Mountain, but I don't get to spend much time with him. But, I mean, I had him when I was really young, and I feel as though it was a mistake to have him really young, because I wasn't ready to have children. How old were you? I was 19 and 20. No, hold on, 19 and I... Or maybe it was 20 and 21, because I know my second daughter was born when I was 20, on um, the day after I turned 21. And the first one I thought was, I think it was like 19, 20, somewhere around there. And yeah, it was, it was a lot, you know. I, I went from being myself to now being a family. And I didn't know what to think about that. And it was, uh, it was a hard experience. I didn't have much for guidance to help me with it, you know, so... I didn't, probably didn't do my best at it, but, you know, they're, they're doing really good, and I'm proud of them, you know, and I see, see pictures of them all the time. It's just hard when they live halfway across the country, you know. Going across the country costs a lot of money. Right. And now with other children and stuff, it's not like I could just jump on a plane and go fly somewhere. It's a little more difficult, and the driving is, takes a lot of time, especially when you can only go about eight hours a day. Can I tell you, you remind me of one of my friends I grew up with, <laughs> always hang out with? Yeah. One of my best friends, yeah. He knows who he is. He knows what he looks like. <laughs> no, but you do remind me of him. And it's, it's just interesting. You know? Yeah, as a... You don't really realize, and not you, but just... There's a lot of pressure put on men. I mean, we bear really the image of God. You know what I mean? Someone to look forward to, someone to create tomorrow. What do you think about that? Mm. Are you aware? No, actually, I'm not. I've, uh, my religious journey is very fresh, and, very and, fresh. I, str and I struggle with it. Um, I didn't grow up in a religious household at all, so this is something newer to me. Right. So me I'm too. Still, uh, <laughs> still trying to figure it all out, you know. I. I have a hard time with, uh, with just believing what, you know, face value of something. I've got to know, i got to know what's behind it, you know what I mean? I mean, I can't see a point on the ground and just expect, you know, okay, it's just a point, you know. Well, what kind of coin is it, you know? Right, right. Like, <laughs> right. And that's, and, that's, and that's when you struggle when you're, when you want to become religious because of the fact that, I have questions that either may not be an easy answer, or and there might not be an answer. Right. You know? And right. for that, that is hard. You know, that deters you away from the fact that oh, you know, this may be one way or the other. You know. Right. So and there's and there's a lot of um, a lot of other, literature on it. Yeah. There is, and that's the hard. That's another hard part. Is that at that point too, you got to you got to go through and you got to tell what's good and what's not good, you know, because people people have their own opinions and some people that what they write is what their opinion is, is not what they not what they found true as a fact. And that's the thing about it is um, how are we to live in this world together if the way we view right and wrong is different. Yeah. Right? Like we we see a situation occur and it's like you're you see it one way and I see it another way and it's just like as long as we, it's okay to have different opinions as far as like, you, do you like coffee? Occasionally. Occasionally. <laughs> I occasionally like coffee sometimes. Yeah. But just something that like, that's like, if you didn't like it and I liked it, that's no reason to hate somebody, right? Yeah. 
But then when it comes down to like big truths, you know, absolute truths, we need to actually find some sort of agreement on, right? Such as marriage yeah. or even friendship, right? You agreed to be here. Yeah. And I agreed to be here, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> there are things that you don't agree with with some of the videos that we've shot or the conversations that, and, you know, I could say the same in any of conversation. It's just yeah. perspective, right? Yeah, I think, always. I think it's, that's the thing is kind of like, for me in any ways on my journey, I, growing in perspective, you know, the more I do study, you know, what would I believe mm -hmm. is the Holy Bible, and then I do study the other religions, and um, I kind of make my... I, I, I ask constantly asking questions, constantly like, okay, this, 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 this. Yeah. And that helps me develop more clarity on, on what I do want to believe. Yeah. To greater truth. And that's, uh, that's the whole point, is to find the truth in all of it. Mm -hmm. you know, if you can't find the truth in all of it, then right. what are we doing? There is truth, I believe. There's got to be. I there, mean, yeah. there's, there's no way that there isn't a truth out there of everything, you know? Yeah. Somewhere there's always an answer. Yeah. It's just finding it. Yeah. Two plus two equals fish. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm going to publish that. Yeah. As my own thing. Yeah. yeah. And say it's absolutely true. <laughs> no, but that's one of the things is pluralism. You've heard of that? Everything is everything. Your opinion is your opinion. My opinion is my opinion. Yeah, I think so years ago. It's been a while since I've been in any kind of classroom. Or rel <laughs> relativity or du du duality. Duality, yeah. It's basically the same concept. It's yeah. We weird. all exist. We all have our own personalities and our own we do. subject. Yeah. No two people are alike. Right. Perfectly alike, I should say. And I think that's what they're, we're trying to figure out here in this idea of our conversation about Battle Mountain is how are we to come together? How are we to um, change the world, change ourselves, grow ourselves? Maybe we don't have the full truth. Maybe we, have, we need to lay some things down and, and let go and let go of our opinions, you know, let go of ourselves and kind of reach out into the unknown. What's out there? You know, what is this? Who, who is this person? You know, completely calm. Uh, with the curious mind and heart, you know, innocence. Um, it's, this show is about you. Not my <laughs> no, you're fine. Go ahead. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it, it is true. I mean, you've got to you got to get communities to stop thinking as themselves and start thinking as a community. And once they, once people believe in a community, at that point, then they're willing to help each other. They don't see their neighbor as the loud person that likes to drink on Sunday night. You know, they is they that see true? Is that true? Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, man. I got a neighbor right now that oh, you're trying they to, need to yeah, they you're... need to learn to <laughs> to uh, keep it indoors. You're trying your best to love. Them. Yeah, <laughs> trying the best not to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Drag them by the ear outside and look like, look, man, people sleep. People got to sleep. <laughs> you see, I'm actually his neighbor. He's talking about me. He's not talking about you. So we're about to hash it out right now. <laughs> no, but. But, yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, like uh, one of my neighbors, he's actually a boss out at my mind site. And, you know, he totally believes in the community. He he understands that this is a small community, and if we can't get along on a one-to-one -one basis, this community is not, not going to survive. The, what is it? Uh, serving for the greater cause? Yeah. We must come together you to know, serve. I mean, me and him have had, we've had our issues, you know, something happened between our dogs, you know. We don't know how it happened, but their dog ended up getting put down, and I felt horrible about, about that, because from what I was told was the dog died, not that the dog got put down. And when I talked to him, because I was like, look, man, you know, if this happened, you know, I am completely sorry. You know, I need to know how exactly this happened because that's not fair. You know, my dog can't be can't be doing that to another dog if that, because that was what the story was. It was our dog had attacked theirs and had pretty much killed it. And I'm like, that's, that's not cool. Like, I don't agree with that. You know, no dog should do that. You know, and so I started talking to him and 
we were talking about it, and it uh, come to find out that, yeah, the dogs did get out. We believe that somebody was going around the neighborhood opening gates, which is how my dog got out because she can't jump the fence. Mm -hmm. She's a little too bumpy. So um, we, we talked about it, and he was all like, no, he says it wasn't your dog. The dog was old to begin with. He says the dog did have a few... Uh, a few scratches on it, and I think they were just playing, you know, and my dog's a big dog, their dog was a little dog, you know, so it, it happened, and he says, you know, he says, we're, we're a community, this is too small of a community, you know, for us to be fighting about this, he says, it's fine, we were the ones that put the dog down, and it's okay, you know, we know that no dog, you know, that your dog didn't mean it in any sense or anything like that, and so it all worked out in the greater good, you know, but I know for a fact that it would have been somebody else, you know, for something who doesn't agree with the community or maybe that just wants to be the mean, grumpy person, you know, at that point, that situation would have been a completely different situation. You know, we would have been, we would have been more enemies at that moment and not working this out as, as neighborly as we can, you know. And so it was, it was good to know that he was, he was understanding like that and he knew that it wasn't anything crazy and we knew that at that point that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't something that was horrible. You know? Hold on to a grudge or something. Yeah. When that, when you say of that, um, I heard, I heard of this um, speech. It was probably a sermon or something. And this guy was basically good customer service isn't here is your product, give me the money. Good customer service is when issues happen, how they get resolved, if they get resolved. You know, that reconciliation with each other. And to say to, on that note, it, I believe that. Like you said, you know, greater good came out of it. It's sometimes when we go through trials, it's to be able to empathize with other people, right? Like, no, I can't relate to what it's like to have your dog missing or die. Yeah. But then that happens to you, and suddenly you have something that you can relate to someone with. You know? yeah. yeah, I've been through uh, that pain or experience or that experience or, you know, that good time too as well. Yeah. You know, we can all relate to good music. We can all relate to bad times. Yeah, you know? and always. It's it's the being able to. That's the relationship. The relationship I feel is the good times, the bad times, the ugly times, the weird times, all, that, all the times. You know, you know I mean? But that some people get stuck in those. Yeah, they get stuck in a grudge. They get stuck in a not wanting to let go of the past. You know, I mean, if you live your life in the past, you're never gonna make the future. Uh, anything else you want to say we're about to go no um i just you to answer your question i don't know much about this so <laughs> okay well so hopefully this you. thing is recording the audio we've had a lot of problems lately oh, so yeah. this is a great conversation i appreciate you showing up very much awesome and i look forward to having you on the show again or just even talking to you all along or some other time yeah all right thank you for tuning in god bless you let me see.